it going? Okay. So you guys, chemical equilibrium. When we have a chemical reaction, that reaction can occur forward, but it can also occur backward. And so what this means, you guys, chemical equilibrium means that both the forward and the reverse reactions occur at the same rate. So sometimes what this is going to look like is that there's no reaction happening at all. Because whatever the forward reaction is, the reverse reaction is happening at the very same speed. So it looks like nothing is happening. And so to help you guys visualize this, think about if I have a shovel and I am digging a hole. For every scoop of dirt that I take out of the hole, that's going to be at the forward reaction. The reverse reaction is that you have a shovel and you're filling that hole back in. So for every scoop of dirt that I scoop out, the forward reaction, you put a shovel full of dirt back in. The reverse reaction. Is my hole ever gonna get any bigger? If we are, if I am scooping out and you're putting back in at the same rate, that hole's never gonna get bigger. Does that mean that nothing's happening? No. No, because I'm still scooping out and you're still putting back in. But we're doing it at the same speed. So that hole's never going to get bigger. I still have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction, but it looks like nothing is changing. Okay, that's chemical equilibrium. The forward and the reverse are happening at the same rate. So whatever bonds are breaking, and rearranging, the reverse is happening as well. That's a reaction at chemical equilibrium. Not all reactions do this, but there are some things called reversible reactions that do this. Okay, so here's an example. And I'm just gonna highlight that so you can see it a little bit better. If I take calcium carbonate, The way that I show that a reaction is at equilibrium is that I have a forward and a backwards arrow. And that makes calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is a reaction at equilibrium. The calcium carbonate is breaking down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide at the same rate that the calcium oxide and the carbon dioxide are combining together to form the calcium carbonate. They're happening at the same speed. There are three ways I can mess up the equilibrium of a reaction, and then what will happen is that the reaction will try and fix that. So if I have this balanced scale, that means if I unbalance it so it looks like this or like this, that means that the reaction is going to try and right itself. The reaction is going to try to get back to that balanced state so that the forward and the reverse are happening at the same rate. Okay, the first thing I can do is I can change the concentration of one of the reactants or products. What's concentration? The amount. It's the amount. It's how much I have of something, right? So if I change the concentration of something, I'm changing how much I have. If I increase the concentration of one of my substances, that's going to cause my reaction to shift to the opposite side. What in the heck does that mean? That means, guys, that uh, if I have this reaction, let's say that I take the calcium carbonate and I increase its concentration, that means that I put more in. So what side of the reaction is my calcium carbonate on? The left side. So if I put more in, what does that do to that side of the scale? 
makes it uneven, it makes it look like this, correct? Yeah. So you guys, which way does it need to shift to fix that? To the right, to the opposite side of whatever I increase. What's it doing? It's trying to use up the rest of that calcium carbonate, so it's gonna favor that reaction that uses that up, and that's the reaction that goes to the right. Well, you guys, what if I decrease the concentration of something? If I take something out, what's my reaction gonna try and do? If I take something away, my reaction's gonna try and make more. So it's gonna shift to the same side as whatever I took out. So for example, you guys, if I take out some of the carbon dioxide, what side of the reaction is the carbon dioxide on? Right. The right side. So if I take it out, guys, what does that do to my scale? It makes that side pop up, which means I need to go which way to fix it? I need to, so which side am I fixing? I'm fixing the right side, so it's going to shift to the same side. I took out the carbon dioxide, so it's going to shift to that same side to fix it. change the temperature. You guys, when I'm looking at temperature, I'm looking at whatever side has the energy. Sometimes it might say energy, sometimes it might say heat, but I am looking at whatever side has energy. So if I increase the temperature, basically what that means is that I put in more energy, or I put in more heat. So if I increase the temperature, it's gonna shift to the opposite side. Well, how do I know that? Because here, guys, which side is the energy on? What side is the energy on in this reaction? The left. It's on the left-hand side, so if I put more temperature, if I put more energy in the left, that makes that side go down, correct? Mm -hmm. and so which way does it need to shift to fix it? Mm -hmm. To the right, the opposite way. But you guys, what if I decrease the temperature? That means that I'm taking energy out. So if I take energy out, that makes this reaction look like this. So which side do I need to shift to? The left, which is the same side that it was on. So it's going to shift to the same side. Now the third thing that I can change to affect the equilibrium of a reaction is I can change the pressure. third thing I can change is the pressure. And what I need to be able to see to know how the pressure is going to change is the amount of gas in a reaction. Okay? Notice that on this reaction, guys, I put some little letters behind our substances. These little letters tell me what states I have. So you guys, what do you think that the S represents? Solid. Solid. And then the G? Gas. What do you think I'm gonna put for liquid? L. I'm gonna put an L for liquid. You may see something that says AQ. You guys, that means aqueous, and it just means that something is dissolved in water. It's not a gas, so you don't necessarily need to worry about it. The other thing we need to look at are the coefficients out in front of each substance. If there's nothing there, what coefficient is that? One. one. That's a one. So you guys, in looking at this reaction here, how many gases do I have on the left-hand side? Zero. I have none. There's no gases here. How many gases do I have on the right-hand side? One. 
1 because the coefficient in front of the gas is a 1. Okay, so you guys, if I increase the pressure, I like to think of this like a balloon. If I increase the pressure on a balloon, if I take a balloon and I push down on it, if I don't want it to pop, do I want that balloon to have more gas in it or less gas in it? Less, less gas. Less gas. Because if I increase the pressure, my reaction is actually going to shift to the side that has less gas. So shift to the side with less gas. So in this case, guys, on this reaction, if I increase the pressure on it, is it going to shift to the right or is it going to shift to the left? going to shift to the left because the left side has what? Zero. Less gas. It has zero gases while the right side has one. But if I decrease the pressure, I still want that balloon to be blown up, right? So do I want more gas or less gas? Yeah. More. So if I decrease the pressure, it's going to shift to the side with more gas. So in this particular reaction, if I decrease the pressure, it's going to go to which side? The right-hand side. Okay. Hit stop on that for a second. <laughs>